9. Death Valley Collision Flying can still be a dangerous business, especially during wartime, when crews were expected not only to take to the air and engage the enemy, but go through rigorous training exercises that sometimes resulted in heartbreaking tragedy. One such tragedy happened over Death Valley in late 1944. Specifically, the area of Murok Army Airfield, now better known as Edwards Air Force in the Mojave Desert, California. A practice mission involving six B-24 bombers was underway, some 20,000 feet in the air. Suddenly, one plane struck another. The impact caused both planes to be destroyed, one breaking apart between the clouds and the other losing its tail and hitting the ground. Only one man survived the shocking and devastating incident. He was a gunner aboard the bomber that broke up in the air and was reportedly sucked out. Thankfully, he managed to access his parachute, though he didn't escape unhurt. Apparently, bone was visible on his head from where the debris had taken all the skin off. Seventeen other people lost their lives that day. Wreckage can still be seen on site, with others joining it, though this doesn't seem to have been a frequent occurrence, luckily. 8. Joshua Tree Tragedy Pilots from the California site of Marchfield were involved in an accident. They were on a training mission, flying over the desert when a collision took place. Again, a couple of B-24 bombers were involved, but this time we're going to look into how the crash occurred. Oddly, this tragedy unfolded a month before our previous story, in July 1944. It was the 4th, i.e. Independence Day also. The flight was traveling in formation at a height of around 10,000 feet when some confusion happened following one of the planes overshooting. It just goes to show the discipline and attention required to maintain a formation, because in trying to pull up, one plane hit another because it mistakenly thought they had room to do so. In a grim echo of the crash to come in August, one plane hit the ground and one man was thrown clear, using his parachute to float to safety. The second plane landed. In total, nine men died. This, apparently, was an extremely close call for the sole survivor of the bomber, with the chute opening just in time some hundred feet from the sand. According to reports, he would have left the plane without a chute, had one not flown through the air in his direction. Sadly, he lost his crewmates, who weren't able to make it out. You can, apparently, go wandering in that area and spot what's left of the crashed plane. This stuff may be twisted and rusted, but it's a reminder of a conflict that claimed lives both on and away from the battlefield. 7. Pacific National Monument Icon Lying on Atka Island, part of the Aleutian Islands in Alaska, is a very special plane. The B-24 Deliberator is one of only three left in existence. It's been included in the prestigious World War II Valor category by the US government for its service during the conflict. Plus, it's damn lucky to be here after a highly dramatic crash landing on the island back in late 1942. So, what happened? Was it shot down by enemy fire? No, but the cause was equally dangerous. Weather. In fact, the plane was over the islands monitoring the conditions when it got caught up in a whole heap of trouble, courtesy of Mother Nature. Things were so bad up there that they had to abandon their original destination and land wherever they could. Atka Island appeared to offer a glimmer of hope, though as they got closer, the pilots realized that there were more problems ahead. Initially, they thought they were landing on a beach, Instead, they were approaching a bluff or hard slope. A serious crash was going to take place. The crew reportedly needed to cram onto the flight deck where they'd be most protected. Among the passengers was an important general, who earlier had been questioning the severity of weather conditions in the area. We're guessing he changed his tune pretty quick, right? Thankfully, everyone made it off the flight and it's since become part of the island landscape. A welcome reminder that while flying in wartime was fraught with peril, it didn't always result in heartache for the families of brave service people. 6. British Bomber in France In mid-1944, a British Wellington bomber was in trouble over the French countryside. Their mission had been to attack an arms factory, but they had been hit by an anti-aircraft fire in the process. They needed somewhere safe to land, and quickly. It was at that point, in the dark, that they noticed some lights. Making for the makeshift landing zone, the crew sadly died after crashing into some trees. The area was a forest in a valley, part of the Alpes de Haute Provence in the southern town of simian la rotonde Who lit the lanterns that guided their way? It was a resistance group who were anticipating the arrival of a British plane. The issue was that they had anticipated receiving supplies via parachute from another aircraft. 
So it was fortunate the stricken Wellington saw these lights. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to save their lives. The men died horribly in the crash, despite the resistance fighters' attempts to save them from the blaze. When the fire stopped, the men were buried and the remains of the plane concealed. Eventually, the crew were reburied, but Britain has a lot to thank these courageous people for. Time passed, but the community didn't forget the bomber crew. A collection of the plane parts has been turned into a lasting tribute to them, with accompanying stone tributes and their names mentioned on a plaque. Have you ever heard any stories about resistance groups that have helped others? Tell us about it in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. 5. Himalayan Discovery Sometimes, when a plane crashes, it takes decades to find the wreckage. In a remote and inhospitable location such as the Himalayas, it's a given. Back in 1945, a C-46 or American Curtis Commando transport aircraft got into difficulty and was lost in the snow. Thirteen people were reportedly aboard. All that was known beforehand was that the aircraft pretty much vanished in an area called Arunachal Pradesh, designated a state in India's northeast from the late 1980s. It doesn't appear to be known why the plane went down. However, the weather was very turbulent that day, so we can make an educated guess that this was the reason. The passengers were flying across the South Chinese city of Kunming, over what must have been a hazardous region for flyers. A descendant of one of the occupants had to engage the services of a professional adventurer to travel into the snow and discover what happened. The plane was eventually found, and the story covered in 2022. It took around 80 years to uncover the wreckage, but it was worth it. Worryingly, no traces of humanity were found there, but at least there's a sense of closure. 4. Brewster in the Water The Battle of Midway is one of the most famous chapters of World War II. Movies have been made about it, and its significance as a blow against the Japanese Navy is acknowledged everywhere. Did you know, however, that one of the planes involved in the 1942 battle was actually a little bit of a laughingstock in pilot circles. Confidence in the Brewster F-2A3 fighter wasn't high. That said, it became a big part of the action, and an example of it rests in the Pacific Ocean, or rather, parts of it do. Specifically, the wreckage was discovered in Midway Atoll Lagoon, part of an area called the Papa Hanau Mokua Kia Marine National Monument. What makes this aviation turkey special is that only three warplanes have been found in the region's waters. Amazing, really, considering the epic scale of the conflict. The Brewster would have been used on the atoll, where it formed a defense against attacking forces. This makes it even rarer, because no other defensive craft have been uncovered to date. Oh, and in case you're wondering what happened to the pilot who landed in the drink, he escaped and continued what turned out to be a long career in the services. 3. Desert Decoration This is a tale of a plane crash discovery with a bizarre twist. During World War II, an RAF pilot brought his P-40 Kitty Hawk down in the Sahara Desert. He reportedly survived initially, but this wasn't the kind of place to be stuck, and he no doubt perished in the heat and dust. His fate may not have been known about had the wreck of the Kitty Hawk not been found in 2012. So, what happened next? Well, apparently attempts were made to get the plane back to its home turf of Great Britain. Negotiations reportedly involved the sending of a Spitfire from Hendon's RAF Museum to sweeten the deal, and presumably have the P-40 sent across the water in return. In the end, it became a one-way transaction, with political problems in Egypt cited as one issue. The much-sought-after plane stayed on Egyptian soil and then disappeared off the radar. Details began to emerge later. It had been taken to El Alamein Museum, this being a town and the location of no less than three famous battles during the war. You'd think this would be a decent place for it, right? The plane was put on display, and the wreckage drew much attention for being in good condition despite its troubles. Unfortunately, the authorities over there had plans in mind to restore the craft during these ensuing years. In 2018, the results became public in the British media, and boy did everyone at the RAF get a shock. Check out this bad boy. In a wholly inappropriate move, the museum opted to color the Kitty Hawk in yellow and brown colors and paint a shark face on it for good measure. This is apparently inaccurate and caused anger back at the P-40's home base. Critics say this is a major disservice, not only to the plane, but crucially the pilot who lost their life when it crashed. 
the restoration job makes it look like a character from a Pixar movie, right? It means the character of this classic craft is lost forever. For shame. 2. Dunkirk Spitfire Another part of World War II that's more well-known than others is the evacuation at Dunkirk. Hundreds of thousands of soldiers had to be rescued from the beaches of northern France. They had nowhere to go but across the English Channel while undergoing enemy attacks from the air. The operation, famously immortalized in a couple of movies, saw the public called upon to transport people across the water on boats. Up above them were planes such as that iconic craft, the Spitfire. A vehicle, dubbed N3200, was part of a squadron tackling German fighters when it was sadly taken down and crashed in the sand. The pilot was captured. Though he went on to survive the war, the plane was left on the beach. So, what happened to it? Well, it disappeared for half a century, due to it sinking under the surface. If the tail hadn't popped up at one point, then no one would have probably been any the wiser. The sighting happened in the 1980s, with the British aircraft returned to Blighty at the start of the 21st century. Incredibly, it was restored and became airworthy again. The Spitfire N3200 takes pride of place at a branch of the Imperial War Museum in Duxford, Cambridge. This is a plane that literally sank without trace, only to be resurrected in all its glory. Take that, Nazis. 1. Three planes in the Pacific one of the most painful aspects of World War II was the unknown fates of those missing in action. Many never came home and their families never knew why. Thanks to modern technology, people can now find out more about what happened. This is being done through deep sea exploration and the locating of sunken aircraft such as planes. In 2020, the team from Project Recover revealed the fruits of their labors. They'd been down in an area known as Truck Lagoon in the Central Pacific Ocean. You may know Truck Lagoon as Chuuk Lagoon these days. However, it has strong ties to that older name and the dramatic events that took place there in 1944. Operation Hailstone saw the Japanese come under attack from the Allies, who struck at a time when the Imperial Navy was trying to relocate a large number of craft from what had once been a key base. As a result, the lagoon became a fascinating underwater graveyard for various vehicles. Project Recover was set up to track down missing service people, so, you can imagine how pleased they were on finding not just one, but three Second World War planes, up to 200 feet or so down below the surface. The team found two SPD-5 Dauntless dive bombers and one TBM-F1 Avenger. Robots with sonar played a major role in uncovering the planes, but old-school investigation helped immeasurably also. To start off, the team pored over historical records, such as a first-hand account of the conflict. Pretty great idea, right? This led to a spot measuring around 27 square miles where the planes could be correctly identified in what is now an environment claimed by the sea and obscured by materials such as coral. These types of projects are a welcome reminder of the human dimension behind the cold machinery and hot fires of conflict. Even if they don't discover any human remains, they've managed to track the course of an incredible period in one individual's life through their vehicle. Never again will we refer to a plane as just a hunk of metal. That's for sure. Thanks for watching. Are there any plane crashes from World War II you think we left off the list? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.